wonderful Jesus. Praise God Almighty. Are you ready for the word? Lord, they are ready. Lord, thank you for what you have been doing for the past three months. Thank you that you are going to do much, much more. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you are good and you are faithful. That you are our healer. You are our provider. You are our protector. You are our Lord, our Savior, our Father and friend. Lord, we thank you that today you're going to speak to us. And Father, we pray that you grant every one of us understanding. Give us understanding to know your word, to know your heart, and to walk into your ways, Lord. And we give you praise and we give you glory for that. In Jesus' precious name. What time is it? It's three o'clock. And some of you are wondering, this pastor got something wrong. It's now 5.40, but he says it's three o'clock. The Lord spoke to us so clearly last night. It is three o'clock. But before I go there, another thing that God showed us last night, padlocks are open. We had a wonderful warfare last night, you know. Those of you who were here last night. Wonderful times of warfare and pushing back darkness and proclaiming the kingship of Jesus. Jesus is sharing his scepter and his crown with his bride. Do you hear what I just said? And we had a wonderful time of warfare last night where I saw padlocks being opened. Padlocks. And so I went back home and this morning I asked the Lord, what do you mean, Lord, padlocks are open? Because doors don't use padlocks. Oh, Lord. Some of you may think, oh, God is opening doors. Oh, yes, He is. But He's doing more than that because doors don't use padlocks. So when I saw padlocks being opened, I understood that God is telling us gates are being opened. Not only doors, but gates are being opened. Now, I want to share a few things here first about these gates. Goodness gracious, how long ago was that? 12, 13 years ago. 12 or 13 years ago. There was a, a senior FGA elder who prophesied over the minist our ministry and he, he told me, that you will be a gate opener. I thought, Lord, you mean I'm going to Jaga Pintu? <laughs> gate opener. <laughs> so about 12, 13 years ago, the prophetic word was given to us. We will open gates. And he even said that we will be like a... <laughs> A battering ram. You know, in, in ancient castles, right, they have big gates. And the, the, the attacking uh, army will come with those big battering rams. They will bang, bang, bang until the, the castle gates are, are fallen, right? And so that was a prophetic word given to us about 12, 13 years ago. The Lord reminded me about that this morning. We are, to call, we are called to open gates. We are called gate openers. Hallelujah. And then something very, very strange happened to me. Could be eight or nine years ago, 
Uh, Pastor David and Pastor Julie, if you still remember, you were having a, a retreat at Stella Morris about eight, nine years ago, right? About that time. And they invited me as the speaker. So that morning, that morning, I drove from where I stayed, Island Glades, to Tanjung Bunga, Stella Morris. Eight o'clock, they have their meeting. I do not know why so early. <laughs> Eight o'clock, they have their breakfast. Breakfast. They told me to come for breakfast, right? Remember that? And so they they call me and to come early. And I left the house seven o'clock. And how many of you know that when it is a, a heavy, heavy downpour, all right, heavy rain, early morning traffic, heavy rain, green lane traffic, 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock can be a nightmare. All right? So it was a heavy downpour, raining heavily, and I drove all the way to Stella Morris. I'm not sure whether I share this with you or not, Pastor David, but did I share this about the gate opening? Yeah, you remember that. Amen. So hear this. I reach Stella Morris. They have this big gate, you know, I think about 15 or 20 feet long. Huge iron grate, iron grate gate, very heavy gate, right? It was raining heavily. The moment my car arrived in front of the gate, I was thinking, how am I going to go down? I forgot my umbrella. Raining heavily, if I get down from the car and go and open the gate, I will be soaking wet. And it is a heavy gate, right? So my car went in front of the gate and it stood and I parked there and I was waiting what to do, what should be my next action. I was pondering to call Pastor David to ask him to send someone down with an umbrella. But before I did that, I saw with my eyes the gate open by itself. Glory to God. We are talking about a 15, 20 feet long gate made of iron. The wind cannot blow one, you know, right? The gate just, and it's a sliding gate. Remember that? Sliding gate. And the gate just slide open by itself. I look at the gate. I was stunned. And I say, Lord, thank you for sending your angels. It has to be angels. It has to be angels, right? Because otherwise, how could the gate open by itself? So I told the Lord, thank you for sending your angels. I saw no angels, but I knew the Lord sent his angel. And so I went in, I parked the car. I went, I shared it with the pastor there, and then later on I went home. The Lord showed me Isaiah 60, verse 11. Isaiah 60, verse 11. Therefore, your gate shall be open continually. You see, every time we have an encounter, a supernatural encounter, it is advisable that we ask God for scriptures so that we know that we are not hallucinating, so that we know that God is doing something and His Word confirms it. And the Lord showed me this Word and say, Your gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day or night. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I like the other one. Man will bring to you the wealth of the Gentiles and their kings in procession. Amen, Lord. Hallelujah. But I look at this one here, the first one. Your gate shall be open continually. And God confirmed that again, that we are called to open gates. <laughs> gates means movements. Doors are blessings, all right? Doors are opportunities. Doors are for divine appointment, divine connection, divine opportunity to usher in divine blessings. Those are doors. Gates, biblically, speaks about movements. And so that confirmed what the Lord was saying to us last night. Padlocks are being opened. Gates are now being opened. Movements are happening. 
movements means God is about to instigate and to release something. Oh, can I say that, Lord? Thank you for correcting me. He just corrected me. Thank you for that. He said, we are to instigate and He will agree with that and He will pour out that movements. So we are the one who instigate with our hunger and our desire for what He wants to do. So it is a confirmation that God is doing something glorious and wonderful and no eyes has seen, no ears has heard. And He is doing something in our land called Malaysia. And we are very much a part of it. I don't know if they are still alive or not, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Wonderful Jesus. The second thing the Lord spoke to us very clearly last night, open your right ear and close your left ear. <laughs> because many times, God speaks to us in the right ear and because we open our left ear, the enemy comes to whisper doubt. And then that doubt takes away the promise. Are you hearing me? Because God speaks to us, I'm going to do this. The enemy comes and says, are you sure God said that to you or not? So the doubt comes in. And when the doubt comes in, that promise is now delayed. Are you hearing this? Very clearly, the Lord spoke to us this last night. He said, tell my people, open their right ear, close their left ears. Hallelujah. So if God has spoken something to us, run with the word. Receive the word, believe the word, run with the word. Don't allow the enemy to come and then tell you, oh, maybe it is, maybe it is not. Because if you have double-mindedness, you will not receive anything. Give me that quickly. James chapter 1, verse 6, verse 7. James chapter 1, verse 6 and verse 7. Let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. And verse 7 tells us, For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. Strong word to remind us again that when God has spoken something to us, Believe the word, receive the word. The Bible tells us, believe in God, you will be established. Believe in His prophets, you will have breakthroughs. You will prosper, you will slack, you will move on. You will, you will have breakthroughs in your life. God wants us to move on to the next season. God wants us to move into the new wine skin. God wants us to move into His promises. We are in a season where promises are being fulfilled. Hallelujah. And we have to anticipate those things. Praise God. Wonderful Jesus. And if you read the Bible, many times when God poured out something, He poured out to a congregation. Hello. Every time revivals happen, every time the Holy Spirit moves, it is always in a congregation. Hallelujah. God is not going to be like a Santa Claus that will come down your chimney to look for you while hiding under your bed. You hear what I just said? And so when we are in a congregation and we are praying and we are worshipping and we are anticipating, we will see, we will see the last days outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It has been prophesied many years ago and it is now coming to the season. The word is coming into maturity. You need to understand something about the prophetic realm. There are prophetic words and it can only be fulfilled when it reaches its timing for it. So the word of God is coming to its maturity in this season. Glory to your name, Lord. Hallelujah. And so... Close your left ear, open your right ear. Hear the word of the Lord, because faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. But doubt also comes from hearing and hearing the voice of the enemy. Right? So close the left ear, open the right ear. Wonderful Jesus. 
Then he spoke about three o'clock. And that is where I want to take us today. And I wrote down a few things that the Lord spoke to me this morning about three o'clock. Hallelujah. Three o'clock. The first thing. Israel was given the green light by Pharaoh to leave Egypt at 3 o'clock in the morning. Exodus chapter 12, verse 30 and verse 31. Exodus 12, verse 30. Pharaoh rose in the night. He and all his servants. And there was a great cry in Egypt. And there was not a house where there was not one dead. And verse 31. And so he called for Moses and Aaron by night, by night. And he said, Rise, go out from among my people, both you and the children of Israel. So it was at night that they were summoned by Pharaoh and Pharaoh said, because the Lord spoke earlier to Moses that at midnight, the Passover will take place. Midnight. Oh, can we go there quickly? I want to show you something about this Passover. Hallelujah. Wonderful Jesus. You want to be blessed today? Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Look at verse 23 of Exodus chapter 12, verse 23. For the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptian, and when he sees the blood, when he sees the blood on the lintel of the houses, when he sees all these things, okay, the Lord says what? He will pass over the door. You see the word there? The Lord will pass over the door. The first thing. Second thing, go to verse 29. And it came to pass at midnight. Verse 29, see that? 12 o'clock midnight that the Lord struck all the firstborn in the land. So it was midnight. Now this word is very, very unique. This verse tells us that when the, the, the angel of death came to Egypt, verse 23 that is now, the Lord will jump. Pasak. He jumped. Literally, the word Pasak means he jumped from door to door and he jumped at every door that has the blood. Every household that has the blood, the spirit of death, the plague wants to come in. The Lord will jump boom, and stand in front of the door and the spirit of death saw that and he will move on to the next house. And if the next house got the blood, again the Lord will boom. That is Pasak. That is the Passover. Hallelujah. So people of God, can I tell you this? Because of the blood of Jesus, every time you come to church, God jump from the leaf <laughs> to the door, to the leaf, to the door, to the leaf, to the door. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because if the blood of an animal, the blood of a lamb can do that, how much more the power of the blood of the Son of the living God will do for you when you believe in the power of the blood. Hallelujah. And so, at 3 o'clock in the morning, the Israelites left. And before they left Egypt, they went to their Egyptian's neighbor. They knocked on the door. 
And they say, give us the gold and the silver. Give us all the best garments. Give us your livestock. The Bible says they plundered the Egyptians at 3 o'clock. When they left, they took with them what was due for them. Hallelujah. Now, 3 o'clock represents deliverance from slavery. Three o'clock represents, in God's prophetic timeline, it represents a time where an entire nation was set free. Three o'clock speaks also about God rewarding His people for what is due to them. This slave has been toiling and toiling the ground for so many years. They have never got their righteous wages, their rightful wages, what is entitled to them. But that day, God is a faithful paymaster. Somebody needs to hear that today. God is a faithful paymaster. He never shortchanged you. If something is due for you, God will always, always provide for you. I want to share something very quickly. I was in the Philippines. I was in the Philippines. Hallelujah. Praise God. Ministering in a church on top of a mountain. And I know that that, that church, they are not so well to do. And so I don't expect them to give me a love gift. In fact, many times in, in, when, when I minister overseas, uh, a lot of times, uh, whatever love gift that they give to me, sometimes I put it back into the offering bag to bless the church. So, I know that they, they can't afford to give me anything. And I'm fine with that. But at the end of the service, at the end of the service, before I left the place, an old auntie, a tribal, you know, mountain people with all her coats and, and her funny attires and so on. And she came and she, she was quite old and she was a bit bent over. And uh, I'm still wondering whether she's an angel or not. <laughs> and she just came at the door and she looked at me, she smiled, she just took my hand and she put something in my hand. And they call that the Pentecostal handshake. All right? She put something in my hand. And I look at her and I say, because when I see her, I know that she can't afford to give me that. I knew that. So I, doesn't, I, I don't want to take that from her. And I, I, I told her, it's okay, auntie, you don't have to. She looked at me. God says, take. Wow. If you say, God says, take, I cannot refuse, ma, isn't it? <laughs> so I had to take, la. And I took it back. I didn't even look at it. I put it in my pocket. I went back home and I looked at it. Goodness gracious, she gave me a lot. So I'm still wondering whether she's an angel or not, right? But what I'm trying to say is that God never shortchanged you. He's a faithful paymaster. Faithful paymaster. Hallelujah. So 3 o'clock speaks about God repaying you what is due to you. God delivering an entire nation out of slavery, out of bondage. It's a time of liberation and freedom. Hallelujah. Praise God for that. So that's the first thing about 3 o'clock. The second one. Lambs, lambs are slaughtered at 3 o'clock for the evening sacrifice. Oh, Jesus. Why do they sacrifice the lambs at 3 o'clock? Because the Bible tells us in those days, they are to present an offering, a worship offering to God in the evening and in the morning. So at 3 o'clock, that's when they prepare the lamb. That's when they slaughter the lamb. Every day for the evening sacrifice, especially during the Passover. And that's the reason why Jesus Christ gave up His spirit because the Lamb of God was slaughtered at 3 p.m. Hello? He hung there on the cross from 9 o'clock in the morning until 3 o'clock He gave up His spirit 
the same time, just about one kilometers away, where the religious Pharisees were about to slaughter the Passover lamb, right there at Golgotha, Jesus also gave up his spirit at the same time, three o'clock. So three o'clock speaks about redemption. Redemption. Because that is the time where lambs are sacrificed for redemption. There was a time when Jesus, the Lamb of God, was sacrificed for our redemption. Right? That's three o'clock. I'm giving you all the good things first. Hallelujah. Praise God. Wonderful Jesus. <laughs> Jesus gave up his spirit at 3 p.m. We mentioned that just now. It's about redemption. It's also about a new covenant being established. Because at 3 o'clock when he says, Asa, it is finished. What he literally means is that now I'm establishing a new covenant. A new covenant with my people. Now you are now my bride. You are my church. Now you are my sons and my daughters. Now I have given to you the spirit of adoption. Now I'm establishing a new order, a new covenant, a new promise for my people and a new provision that comes with that promise. Hallelujah. And so all this took place at 3 o'clock as it was recorded in the Bible. Hallelujah. Now, let's go to Matthew, Matthew 27, verse 50, 51 and 52. Matthew, verse 27, verse 50 first. You see, Jesus cried out again with a loud voice, and he yielded his spirit to the Lord, to the Father. And verse 51, when he did that, look what happened. The will of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And the earthquake, earthquakes, and rocks were split. Now, first thing first, the veil, 15 feet high, 8 inches thick. The density of the fabric itself is Inches, it means that when you compress the fabric, all right, the density of it of the fabric is eight inches thick. Scholar says it takes eight horses to rip that wheel apart. Four horses on the left, four horses on the right, and they will pull on opposite side. It takes the strength of eight horses to rip that wheel. But Jesus, with just one word, Asa! And that temple veil was torn into two. What does that imply to us today? It means that there is no longer a separation. There is no longer a separation between God and man. It means that now we can come boldly to Him. It means that now there will be an unveiling of more revelation of who God is to this generation. It means that now the veil is being torn and whatever veil that is shielding our eyes, our perspectives from knowing God, that veil is now being torn. Now God is saying to you, church, I am revealing more of my glory to you in this generation. The veil is coming off. The veil is being torn apart. Three o'clock. Second thing, you will see earthquakes. And that's why Haggai, the book of Haggai says, Once more I will shake the heavens and the earth and everything that can be shaken. Haggai chapter 2 verse 6, everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And that's why we have seen a lot of shaking taking place all over the world. Can I tell you this, people of God? The shaking is our alarm clock. Because the church, a major part of the church, 
has been sleeping. And they need to be awakened. And so therefore, the shaking comes to awaken us. It's time to get serious again. You know, during the MCO, or the month of March, the month of April, they did a statistics, you know. And we are talking about, we are talking about the population of the world. They did a statistics. 70% of the population of the world are searching for a religious answer to the problem that they are having. 70% of 7 billion people, you know, are searching the internet for an answer. I was shocked to see that our, you know, we were doing a lot of home videos at that time, live streaming home videos from our home because of the lockdown. I was surprised to see that at one time, we have 6,000 over people who watch us. Wow. During the MCO. But now, no more MCO, people don't want to watch anymore. Because they can go back to the malls. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, people of God, the shaking is an alarm clock to awaken the church again. That we are awakened to know the time that we are living in. And it is high time to be awakened. And that's why it is 3 o'clock. <laughs> It's 3 o'clock speaks about a wake-up call. A wake-up call for the church. Rocks were split. And do you know that at one time, when Moses struck the rock, and the rock split, and water gushed out. Can I also tell you this? In this time of shaking, in this time of tremors and troubles, many who are searching will also find living water because waters will come out and will quench the thirst of many hungry, thirsty souls. Are you hearing all this? Matthew 14 verse 25. Oh, let's go to verse 24 first. Matthew 14, verse 24 and then 25. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. That's what's happening to the nations today. That's what's happening to almost every nation on the planet today. We are in the middle of a storm. And the winds are contrary. We do not know what's going to happen next. We do not know which direction to go after this. Hallelujah. And one day, we have a prophetic word that says, All is well. But then the next day, the media say, not so. So there are contrary voices speaking. There are contrary winds blowing. The wind of God's Spirit is blowing one direction. The wind of demonic spirits are also blowing the other direction. And there are storms and we are being tossed to and fro, to and fro. But look at verse 25. And Jesus came. Verse 25. Now, in the fourth watch, three o'clock. At three o'clock of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. I want you to hear these people of God. Every storm in our life serve one purpose. Or can I put another one lot? Two purpose. Every storm in our life serve two purpose. There are two reasons why we face storms in our life. The first one 
is to reveal us for who we are. It means that it reveals our priorities. It reveals where we invest our treasure, where we invest our time. It reveals our character. It reveals our faith. It reveals us for who we are. Storms shakes off the dust from our eyes that we can see ourselves clearly. The second purpose for storms is that it reveals Jesus. Do you hear that? Storms reveals Jesus. In every crisis, Christ is. Hallelujah. Because it's during the storms, the disciples will call out, Lord, where are you? Lord, why are you sleeping in the boat? Don't you know that we are perishing? Of course he knew that. Lord, help us through these storms. And so every time when they, we are facing storms, remember this. The, so the storms in life reveal us for who we are and it reveals Jesus. So Jesus came at 3 o'clock and He came during a time when the disciples were being rocked. They were being rocked in the boat and none of them were singing the nursery rhyme, rock bye baby. <laughs> because it was not... <laughs> Oh, you know the song, Hallelujah, praise God. So, Hallelujah, Jesus came. So, can I tell you here, people of God, we are in the three o'clock hour in the nations today where we see every nation being shaken, where we see every boat, every household, businesses, churches, ministries, and many other places in the marketplace. Everything is being shaken. Everything that can be shaken is being shaken, but it serves a purpose, and that is to reveal Jesus. Because here He comes riding on the storms. Here He comes walking on the waters. Hallelujah. So we are, a time, we are in a time of darkness, but the glory of the Lord is coming upon His people so that the, those who are in darkness will see a great light. And you and I, we are the carrier of that light. Don't hide your light under the bed. Oh, sorry, under a basket. Hope you got the message. You are the light of the world. The only way you can shine your light is when you come out and shine that light brightly. Hallelujah. 3 a.m. is what we call transition time. Let me explain this to you. Oh, God Almighty. Are we all still here? You didn't go to Mass. Listen. Biblical times, in biblical times, every city have what is called watches. Not watchtower. <laughs> watches, right? Watches means they have Guards standing at the city walls, all right, that watch for enemies that may come in the night or during the day. So they have watches in biblical times. And their watches are four hours. Every four hours they change guard, biblical times. Then the Romans came. And the Romans occupied Judah and the northern kingdom. And they, they introduced the watches to three hours every watch. Okay? So in Old Testament, it was four hours. New Testament, three hours every watch. Now, the Hebrew time starts at 6 p.m. God created the heavens and the earth. At, at the end of every day of creation, He says, and the... Day, it starts what? In the evening, and God saw the evening, and He saw the morning, and He said, it is good. God's time starts at 6 o'clock p.m. 
6 p.m. is the beginning of a new day. Now you know why we have Sunday service at 4.30. Because 6 o'clock, you receive the word from your past day and the past week to take you into the new day and the new week. Are you hearing this? Because we are prophetic. That's God's timeline. Right? That's the reason why we have 4.30 and our service ends after 6 p.m. Amen? Now you know why. Now, there is also another watch in the early hours called 3 a.m. 3 a.m., can I also add this, was the time when Peter denied Jesus three times. So, we are in the time called 3 o'clock where there are people that can also deny Jesus. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Alright? It's very significant. Because God told us last night, very clearly, it's 3 o'clock. So, 3 o'clock in the morning, 3 a.m., is the time of utter darkness. Because why? Dawn is very near. You know that as you come near to morning, now well, morning in Israel can be 5 o'clock. In Malaysia, 6 something, it starts to get bright. Am I right? Or around 7. It depends on what month of the year it is. All right? Now, before dawn comes, during the time before dawn, it is the thickest or darkest. Do you know that? It is the darkest time. Hallelujah. So if you would want to go back to fairy tales, Dracula don't come out at 12, it comes out at 3. Glory to you, Lord. God, that's fairy tale, okay? Now, let's come back to this. 3 o'clock is the time where most enemies will come and lay siege on a city. So when God tells us last night it is 3 o'clock, He is reminding us that this is the time to be watchful in prayer. Are you hearing me? Because this is the time where the enemy wants to come and steal. Because it is the darkest moment in the planet. Steal away what? Steal away our faith. Steal away our peace. Steal away our joy. Steal away our resources. Steal away our hope. I'm hearing something. Give me one minute here. Help me here, Lord. Help me to make this clear to your children. This is what the Lord says. In the first three centuries, during the Roman occupation, during the time of persecution of the early church, it was the darkest moment for the church. Some of them, literally, they can't even get out from their house. They had to go underground because of that intense persecution. The emperors of, of Rome were killing them. Christians were being martyred by the thousands in the first three centuries. And this is what keep them going. This is what keep their lampstands burning. This is what keep them moving forward. This is what keep them worshipping the Lord, even though they had to be confined inside their houses because they were in fear of persecution. They can't even show themselves out in, in public. They would be slaughtered by the Roman soldiers. And this is what the Lord said. This is what kept them burning. Three things. Faith, hope, and love. I just heard the Lord say that. Faith. They have such faith to believe that all is well. Even though their houses were falling down. Even though they were being chased out of their cities. Even though they, are, they, were living, they were living in such times of persecution, 
even though they were, they were running away from the Roman soldiers, yet they have such faith to believe that all is well. They have hope. They have hope. They know that. They know that there is a better promise waiting for them. They know that there is a place called paradise. They know that great is their reward because they persevere. And that was why entire families can hold hands together in the Roman Colosseum when the emperors released the lions and lions, hungry lions, coming to kill an entire family. And family can hold hands together and sing Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Prop. Father lost his head, lion beat. Then mother sing, Hallelujah. So suddenly daughter lost her head, mother continued to sing, Hallelujah. My question to you today, can you do that? If you cannot do that, you are not prepared for the end times. Do you hear what I just said? If we cannot do that, there is something wrong with our faith today. Because the days are coming. The days are coming. Don't miss this Saturday. I will talk about the beast empire. The days are coming when the church will have to face the same kind of tribulations. But are we prepared for that? Can we praise God? Can we have the faith and the hope and the love to forgive our enemies? And the love to forgive those who kill and slaughter our children? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Sometimes I ask the Lord this, you know. I say, Lord, why you want me to always say these kind of things? Other pastors, they always talk about grace. God bless you. God prosper you. God love you. Wonderful. That's why all those pastors, people love them very much. But why you always give me the hard case, Lord? <laughs> The Lord says, you, you want to be my prophet. Prophet speaks the truth. Sometimes people don't like it. That's why prophets get stoned a lot. Hallelujah. And that's what the Lord says, faith, hope, and love keeps you in this three o'clock hour. Are you hearing me? Yes, the world is shaking. Things are shaking. Things are getting dark. But we have faith. We have hope. And we have love to overcome. We have love that will take us through this season of trials because we are overcomers. Amen. We are overcomers, people of God. I want to tell you this. You are on the winning side. I don't like to emphasize on how dark Darkness can become. I always want to emphasize on how bright that light is because that light is brighter than the darkness. Even though the darkness will come, but you are the light of the world and we have the light of Christ. Amen. And we have nothing to fear. Three o'clock is the time of deep darkness. And it's a transition period. Because from darkness comes the morning. Now give me this. <laughs> give me this quickly. Second Peter 1 verse 19. And this will bless you. This will bless you so that you can have dinner. And so we have the prophetic word. Everything that you've been hearing in these past few months, we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in what? In a dark place. You do well to take heed of the word that you have been hearing. Take heed of it, treasure it, believe it, run with it. And it will be your light that shines in the dark place, in the time of darkness. Until, until what? The day dawns. 
People of God, can I tell you here, the clock is three o'clock, but it will not stay three o'clock all the time because it is ticking and ticking and ticking and it is moving forward. And the time will come when you will see the day dawn and the morning star arise in your hearts. That's when you will see the fullness of God's promises. You will see the morning star. Who is the morning star? His name is Jesus. He is our morning star. Yes, we are in the time of darkness. We are in the night hours now. But the dawn is coming. The dawn is coming. Hello, the dawn is coming. And how great will that light be when it comes? When you have been through a time of darkness, suddenly you see light, you welcome that light. You appreciate that light. And I want you to hear this. The times are coming when the children of God will appreciate the revealing of Jesus, the manifestation of Jesus. Oh, the children of God will appreciate that so much because the morning star is now arising again and He comes, He comes like the Son of Righteousness. He comes with healing in His wings. Are you hearing me? He comes. He comes. Give me quickly Malachi and chapter 4 and verse 2. And look what the Bible says in Malachi 4 verse 2. And it says that the son of righteousness, he shall arise. He is the morning star and he shall arise with healings in his wings. He will come in healing in his wings. And he said, you shall go out. Who shall go out? You shall go out. And you shall grow fat. Oh, that's what the word says. <laughs> you shall go out. You shall grow fat. Like stall fat calves. You know what's a stall fat calf? The bull that has been fat with the best grass, best food, so that the bull will be healthy, full of meat, waiting for the slaughter. That's called stall fat calves. You shall go out, you shall grow fat. Verse 3. Verse 3. You shall trample the wicked. You shall trample on every snake and every scorpion and the young lions and the cobra and every demonic influences. You shall trample on all kinds of wickedness and they shall become ashes under the soles of your feet. Hallelujah. So, just in case you are watching Mr. S. A. Tan, you are under my feet. Hallelujah. That is the authority that God has given to you. You and I have that authority, church. You are the royal priesthood. You are kings and priests. You are eagles, not cowards. You are the end time army of the Lord. Asia Revival Center has been marked by the Lord. We are called to be a catalyst to raise up generals who don't wear medals. I say that again. We are called to raise up generals who don't wear medals. But we carry a trophy called a cross. You are marked by the Lord. God gave us that word so strongly last night. You are Mark. Next Saturday, we got Mark of the Beast. Today, we got Mark of the Living God. You are marked by the Lord. And when you are marked by the Lord, please, please, please don't run away. He may send a big fish after you. Jonah was marked. 
I brought this up last night. Jonah was marked by the Lord. And God could have called another person. God could have called Johannes, Jacobus. God could have called Joshua. God could have called another name, another person. But yet God kept his mark on Josh, oh sorry, on Jonah. And even though Jonah runs away, he went to Spain. <laughs> he went to Tashish, that's Spain. <laughs> Hallelujah. He went to Barcelona for vacation. <laughs> But God brought a big fish to swallow him back because if you are marked by the Lord, you cannot run away. God gave us that strong word last night. Asia Revival Center, you are marked by the Lord. Why? Because you got a crazy madman here that is there to preach the truth. And I'm preaching the truth to you. We need to be prepared. We need to be strengthened. We need to rise up. We need to walk into the calling of God. Hallelujah. And we are going to see the manifestation of the glory. It is three o'clock. Yes, but the morning star is arising, people of God. The promises are coming. They are just looming across the horizon. We are entering into a time where we're going to see the fulfillment of those promises. Some of you may ask, Pastor, you've been speaking all the time about promise. How come a few years still we don't see the promise? Hey, why do you complain? Only a few years. Abraham waited 25 years, you know. Abraham waited 25 years for the promise and he never wavered in his trust and in his faith. And true enough, the promise came. But can I tell you this? Can I close with this, Lord? I was in the Philippines. This was five years ago. Five years ago. There was a church that had their 25th year anniversary 25th year anniversary and I told the Lord I asked the Lord actually I said Lord what would Asia Revival Center be like in its 25th anniversary and there was silence so I asked again Lord can you just give me a glimpse because we are friends my right Friends don't keep secret from each other one, you know. Do you know that God is your friend? Amos 3 verse 7 say He revealed His secret to His prophets. And so I asked the Lord, I say, Lord, <laughs> just a glimpse, la, a tip. What would Asia Revival Center be like in its 25th anniversary? Waited. And then I heard the Lord say, you really want to know? Of course I want to know. We are friends. At least I can be excited a bit. Lah. What would ARC be like in its 25th anniversary? And then the answer came. Son, ARC will never have 25th anniversary. I say it again. Five years ago, the Lord spoke to me very clearly. We will not have 25th anniversary. Meaning that before our 25th anniversary, we are no longer here. <laughs> Do you hear what I just say? We are no longer here. We'll be having our carnival. That time not revival, that time carnival in New Jerusalem. So that was five years ago. So, 20 years to go. I don't want to give timeline, you know, because I give timeline, people will start to count. Oh, oh. Then the other day, Kevin Zadai said, God said what will happen in the next 11 years. Oh. I tell people about the nine years birth bang, everybody start to make marriage plans. Hallelujah. 
I didn't say the world ends in nine years, okay? Don't get me wrong. I say nine years birth banks. But remember, there's still a seven year of peace treaty. Middle of that, the beast breaks the peace treaty and then it enters into another seven years of tribulation. Middle of that, pre rough you and I are taken. So go and do your mathematics. We will never have our 25th anniversary. <sighs> oh Lord, you are all very quiet. They are counting. <laughs> but keep on living your life as you are living it now, as usual. Don't go and sell off everything and go and hide in the cave after you meet Alibaba there. <laughs> Just live your life, but live your life with a greater understanding and a greater anticipation of who Jesus is and what He's about to do. Live your life with the first love, fresh love, deeper love for Jesus. Amen? Because we are going to see Him soon. Father, we thank You for today. We thank You, Lord, it's 3 o'clock. <laughs> it's 3 o'clock and You walk on the waters, Lord. You walk on the waters of our storms, Lord. You reveal Yourself. You are our deliverer. We thank You, Lord, 3 o'clock, Israel got out from Egypt. And they plunder the Egyptians, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We are going to plunder the wealth of the world and they will come to the righteous. And not just the wealth, but the souls of the world, they will come into the kingdom. Lord, that every resource that belongs to you, Lord, we are going to claim it in this time, Father. We thank you for that, Lord. That in the shakings, in the shakings, we are awakened. And Lord, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you that we are not drowning, but we are thriving, Lord. We are triumphing over the waves of life, over the storms of life because you are with us. And we thank you, Lord, that we have the prophetic word given to us and there will be light that shines in these times of darkness. And we thank you, Father, that the morning star will arise in our hearts. And when that happens, we will see the rainbow. The rainbow after the darkness. Glory to your name, Lord. Lift up your hands, church. May the Lord bless you. May He shine His face on you. May He bless your going out and your coming in. May He bless the works of your hand that He will be favorable toward you. And may the gates be open in your life that you will see an outpouring the flood of God's goodness flowing into your life. And may the love of the Father, may the grace of Jesus, and may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. The Lord bless you. Give him the glory. Give him the glory.